My name is Marie Audette, and I'm happy to welcome you to my family's dairy farm, Blue Spruce Farm, located in Bridport, Vermont. We started here um, with two people in 1958, you know, mom and dad, and today we're 18 of us still surviving off the family farm. So this is where we milk our cows every day, twice a day. Some farms milk them three times a day. This milking parlor is pretty typical of what you'll see in a lot of Vermont farms. We milk 1,300 cows now, and our milk goes right down the road a little ways to Middlebury at the Cabot Cheese Plant, where um, you know, we're pretty proud of our award-winning cheddar and kind of puts Vermont on the map. We're kind of proud of that. On March 7th, we were one of three farms in the country, go Vermont, to receive an award for sustainability. I'll admit it, I mean, it was a really big deal. Historically, dairy farmers are all about sustainability. Even before that was a popular little buzzword, we care about our environment. It's not only possible to protect the water supply and put out a quality product, it's imperative. 50 years ago, everybody was contributing to phosphorus in the lake. Well, society is evolving. Dairy farming is evolving. Farmers are having to look to a future by 2050 of increasing the food production by 70% to feed this growing population. That happens with innovative and sustainable creative ideas and technology. I want people to know that we capture all of the manure, all of the wastewater, everything that happens on this farm, and we redirect it to use a whole bunch of value-added products. And I want people to know that it's not just us. Every size farm is adopting these, these sustainable practices. It's a scraper, it's kind of like a squeegee on the wheels at gathering up the manure, where it goes into a gutter and gets pumped to the digester. So this is what a digester looks like. It's basically just a concrete uh, in-ground swimming pool with a concrete cover. And all the manure that you saw um, being collected in all the barns comes right into the digester. And from there is where it goes into the separator. And then the separator, we squeeze the liquids out and then the solids are effectively what you're seeing what the cows are sleeping on. It's like peat moss. It's dry, fluffy material. You know, they make them more comfortable. And a cow that's comfortable is going to be happier. And a happy cow gives us great quality milk. The liquids from the separators come into our manure pond, just like this. And this liquid manure um, is what we use in the aerator to fertilize all our fields. Then we pump those nutrients when we're ready, when our fields are ready to be fertilized through a hose. Hose goes for several miles and it goes to the aerator, which is just little wheels that pokes holes into the ground. And then the manure that's going through the hose is just being sprayed right behind that so it has some place to go. And those holes are just injecting, allowing that manure to flow right inside the soils so where it's gonna stay put where we need it so that we can grow our crops for our cows for the next year. Between seven and eight thousand gallons, so I go up. That's a little heavy, so I had them run at three and a half miles an hour. Got it. We capture all the nutrients on the farm, and we're we're regulated, and we're watched, and we measure, and it's a scientific process. It's not just a shoot from the hip. The whole idea with this type of fertilization, with any fertilization, is to keep the nutrients where they're needed, right where the plants are. How do we do that? Well, aeration is a perfect example, but we also keep it away from any possible streams so that if there is a water event, if we do get some rain, um, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, it's going to stop right where it is, and that's our whole intent. Yeah, historically, we didn't know any differently. You know, the most efficient use of our farmland was to use every square inch. I mean, that's what our fathers all did. You know, if that edge went to a stream, you know you, how good of a farmer you were because you got up to the edge. But we don't do that anymore. You know, we know better. So what have we done? You know, all this marginal land on our farm and on most farms in the state is growing back into forests. 
So they serve as natural buffers. So if it rains or some nutrients escape, they have a place to land way before they could get to the stream. There are very few people that have ulterior agendas that are making a lot of noise, trying to make it sound like we're being irresponsible stewards of the land, when absolutely the opposite is true. Okay, we didn't always do it right. We're not perfect today, but we are doing more every day. We are capturing the nutrients. We understand that we can't just let them go at will. What I'd like to say to folks who who would claim that the model of dairy farming today is inconsistent with a clean lake is come to the Vermont farms and look for yourselves. We're driven to do the right thing because we have a lot of pride. <laughs>